Hey everyone, Pratik Nike here, a Capture One ambassador and full-time professional retoucher. Today I'm excited to get the honor to show you an update that I have personally been very excited for for a long time, and that is a dedicated healing brush within Capture One's update. Now this update's available for you if you've purchased Capture One 20 as a free upgrade, as well as obviously people who have a subscription to Capture One. Now, once you've downloaded the recent update in the May 2020 launch, uh, you do have to make sure that you have your layers panel up within Capture One. And today I'm going to be using this particular image that I shot of my good friend Arbeni, who's an amazing model. And once I have my layers identified, I'm going to come over here and click on the healing icon, which is in the bottom right corner, as you can see highlighted in orange. Once I have that clicked, I simply need to come over to the image. And then at any point in time, click on the image itself and anything I want to heal. Once that is executed, you'll notice that the layers themselves will have this healing layer one selected with a checkbox next to it, which identifies that it automatically added this healing layer. Now, the difference between this particular healing layer and the one that you're used to is that with this particular healing layer, I can actually add multiple strokes within the same layer. Now I can remove as many blemishes as I want in one fashion, one easy fashion. And as you'll notice, it works extremely fast and extremely versatile because now I have everything in one layer. And I can't tell you what a relief this is because this is just how I would personally work as a retoucher. I want everything in one layer with my healing work. And I can easily just go ahead and work on everything that I want. One thing that you'll notice is that it automatically heals with great accuracy and precision and results when I'm using my healing brush without even sampling it because it automatically has a very good job in understanding of how it's sampling the source point. The algorithms based on the engineers have done a, such a good job and I would say that I've noticed a huge difference even from the previous version with the results that I'm getting just by clicking on the blemish, highlighting it and letting Capture One do its work. And I'm such a stickler for quality. So this is, comes as a huge welcome for me um, especially because I always work with images that are very sharp, highly textured, and need extremely good results. And of course, it's not completely foolproof. There are times when it might not do a perfect job. However, in that instance, all you need to really do is move the source point around to get to what you're looking for. And once you move your source point around, in case you want extreme precision that you're trackpad, your mouse, or your tablet can get to, you simply need to click on the actual source point and use your arrow keys. And then it will actually move it to the exact certainty that you're looking for. And fun little tip, you can hold shift and move the source point in increments that are larger than using just your arrow keys themselves. So it'll jump a little bit more in case you want to get something a little bit further away. So aside from that, aside from being so fast and you're accurate and a lack of needing any more layers, you obviously can add more layers if you want to. Let's talk about some of the other options that the healing brush has. Number one, these arrows here. In case you start doing a lot of healing work and it gets annoying or you don't really like arrows on your work and you want to see the image for what it is, simply click on the mask option and you'll notice that it's not here. So what you need to do is click on the settings option, your brush settings options, and where it says healing brush settings, make sure you click on display arrows and uncheck it. And then what that does is once I come back here and uncheck it and come over to the image, you'll notice that the actual arrows themselves are gone. There are no more arrows there. Obviously, they're not permanent. You can go back and check it again if you want to. So that's good. You can also, on top of that, um, you can use it as a regular healing brush by holding Alt or Option on your keyboard. And let me turn the arrows back on again so you can see it easier. I can hold Alt or Option, and it comes up with this plus sign. I can click on a piece of skin, and then I can start brushing anywhere that I want. And what this does is it automatically sets a source point first before working in case you feel like the results are not adequate or you want that control. If you're someone like me who's a huge control freak, um, <laughs> but that's a good thing to know. The next thing that I want to mention is just like I did here, this little lip edge here. You'll notice what a good job it did. And let me turn off my arrow so you can see it better. And I'm going to turn this healing layer on and off so you can see what a really good job it did of removing that little freckle there. 
And I'm not normally going to remove freckles on my image, but this is a good example to show you how the healing brush works. You'll notice that it did such a good job on that edge that it's so hard to tell the difference between what was there and what wasn't. And I have to really commend the engineers for actually creating the algorithm for the healing brush because they did extensive work in making sure that the results themselves, even in complex areas, are nice and usable. And I always work in areas like this where I really need you know, accurate results in complex situations. And I'm almost getting lost here, just zooming in and working on this image because it really does have a fantastic result when I'm working. And I can really have faith in the results that I'm getting even before going to Photoshop. And ultimately, you have to keep in mind, this is working at the raw level. This is a raw file. So these results, I would say, are unprecedented in how great they work at the stage that you're working in. And in many cases, you might not even need Photoshop for the healing work that you're going to do because it takes care of it at this stage if you so want it to. The advantage of that is it keeps everything in one compact file. And for many people, once a healing brush is done, you can also do dodge and burn within Capture One if you wanted to, and then continue working, and then have everything done, including color grading within Capture One. So it starts to pose the question, what isn't possible for you anymore? What tools do you really need outside Capture One? And even Capture One isn't saying that Photoshop isn't relevant or is relevant um, and isn't relevant depending on what you need. But what they're saying is that because a healing brush you know, is so powerful, if you're the type of person who only does that and some minimal work, you might not even need additional steps. But if you're you know, doing composites and things like that and color grading and tools that might not be in Capture One, and obviously you need to pair it up with Photoshop. But for the most part, I'm just really excited about the update here with the healing brush. And the last thing that I do want to mention really quick is that the brush size itself, if you notice, it doesn't really have any limitations as it comes to the brush size. Once it gets to a certain point, it doesn't really disappear or change into a plus sign like it used to before. It goes all the way down and becomes as precise as you're looking for. So if I actually want to remove a really small blemish like this, I know exactly what my brush size is and I can easily remove anything that I'm looking for and work in a very precise way. And this is something that they've also added in this update. For me, this is so handy because I'm always working with really small areas that I normally really need to you know, shrink my brush size down for, this will get me there without having to zoom in either. So between all these adjustments, I'm able to get something that uh, is easy to use and very familiar without any compromises. And of course, if there's anything that you don't particularly like about this, you can use the eraser brush tool, come back and erase anything that you're looking for on this layer. So it works kind of like a mask in that um, if you're trying to redo any part of your image, you can do so just by erasing it and bringing it back by using the additional healing steps. I truly hope you ended up liking this demonstration of the healing brush and it showed the true power of what's possible. Um, I really, really appreciate the updates that have happened with this version because it's something that I can put into use right away. The healing brush is something, as I mentioned, that is now on its own particular icon and layer so that you can do as many strokes as possible on one layer. It's extremely fast. You can move your source point if you want to, and you can define the source point as needed. It seems to work efficiently, as seamlessly as possible on an image that's this big as well. And of course, the algorithms behind the healing brush are extremely good, and the results are something that even me as a high-end retoucher can be very happy about. I hope you like this video. I can't wait to see what you guys think of the healing brush and what you guys do with it.